Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to find these limits here given the graphs of the functions f and g. Let's get started. First, let us find the limit of this sum here as x approaches negative 4 from the left. So this is our negative 4. So if we look at the graph of f as x approaches negative 4 from the left, so the points on the graph of f get closer and closer to this point and the y value of this point is equal to 1 therefore the limit of this function here as x approaches negative 4 from the left is equal to 1 and if we look at this function g here so again this is our negative 4 as x approaches negative 4 from the left the points on the graph of G get closer and closer to this point where the Y coordinate is equal to zero. So therefore the function values of G of X is approaching zero as X approaches negative four from the left. And because these two limits exist, therefore the limit of this sum is equal to one plus four times zero, which is equal to one. Now, let's look at the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches 3. So, this is our x equals 3 here. And since this is a two-sided limit, we have to approach 3 from both sides of 3. So, what happens to the function values of f as x gets closer and closer to this number 3 here? So we see that the points are getting closer and closer to this point, And then also these points on the right of 3 get closer and closer to this point. And because they are approaching a single point, then the limit exists. And it is the y coordinate of this point here, which is equal to 1. And if we look at the graph of G, so the points are getting closer and closer to this point when we approach 3 from the left and the points are getting closer and closer to this same point here as x approaches 3 from the right so again two-sided limit exists and the limit is equal to the y coordinate of this one which is equal to 0. Now if we look at the graph of our g the function values are actually approaching zero from the left of zero because the points are below the x-axis. Therefore, the limit of this quotient here is equal to one over zero from the left. And if we're going to divide one by a super small negative number, then we're going to get a super large negative number. Therefore, the limit of this one is equal to negative infinity. Now, let's find the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches 0. So, this is our x equals 0 and we have to approach this from both sides. And if we look at the graph of f, so the points are getting closer and closer to this point. And also, the points on the right of 0 are getting closer and closer to this point, which is the y-intercept of the graph of f. Therefore, the limit of our function is equal to this y-intercept, which is equal to 2. Now, if we look at the graph of g, when we approach this 0 from the left, the graph increases without bound, which means that the function values uh, approach infinity while when we approach zero from the right the graph decreases without bound which means that the function values approach negative infinity therefore the limit of this quotient is equal to 2 over plus or minus infinity and if we're going to divide 2 by a large positive number or by a small negative number then we get a small positive or negative number and that number approaches zero therefore the limit of this quotient here 
is equal to 0. Now, let's move to the next limit. So, let's find the limit of this product here as x approaches 1. So, we know already what will happen, okay, to uh, x squared plus 1 as x approaches 1. So, here, as x approaches 1, we know that this x squared will approach 1 squared, which is uh, equal to 1 plus 1. So, therefore, this will approach uh, 2. Now, how about our function f? So, as x approaches 1 from both sides, we see that the points on the graph of f are approaching a unique point. Therefore, we have a two-sided limit. And the two-sided limit is the y-coordinate of that point. And the y-coordinate of uh, this point is actually equal to 3. Therefore, the limit of this uh, product here is equal to the quantity 1 squared plus 1 times uh, 3, which is equal to 6. Notice here that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is not the same as the function value at 1. Because if we look at the function value at 1, so we have this uh, solid dot here. So function value at uh, 1 is equal to uh, 5, while the limit is equal to 3. So this uh, tells us that uh, finding limit is not always about finding function values. Let's move to the other limits. Let's find the limit of this quotient here as x approaches 4. So this is our x equals 4. And clearly, this f of x here will approach 0. So the points on our graph from the left of 4 and from the right of 4 are actually approaching the x-intercept. Therefore, the function values are approaching 0. Now, how about the function g? So as x approaches 4 from both sides, we see that the points on the graph of g are getting closer and closer to a single point, which is this point here. And the y-coordinate of that one is equal to negative 1. Therefore, the limit of g of x as x approaches 4 is equal to negative 1. Thus, the limit of this quotient is equal to negative 1 over 0 from the right. And why is it 0 from the right? Because of this square here, we know that this denominator here will approach 0 from the right. And now, what happens when we divide a negative number, like negative 1, by a super small positive number? We're going to get a super large negative number. So the limit of this quotient here is equal to negative infinity. Now, let's find the limit of g of x over f of x minus 3 as x approaches 1. So we know already that this function f of x here is approaching 3, which is the y-coordinate of this point here. And how about g of x? g of x, so if you look at the points on the graph of g as x approaches 1 from both sides, they are approaching a single point, and that is this point here with y coordinate equal to negative 2. So the limit of this quotient here is equal to negative 2 over 0, and this denominator here is actually approaching 0 from the left. Why? Because the function values here of f are actually less than 3 as x approaches 1 from both sides. So these function values here are less than 3. Therefore, if we take the difference of f of x minus 3, we'll get a negative number. So this difference here is approaching 0 from the left. Therefore, what is the limit? So when we divide a negative number by a super small negative number, then that is negative over negative, we're going to get a huge positive number. So the limit here is equal to positive infinity. Now, let's find the limit of this difference quotient as x approaches negative 4 from the right. 
Now, what does this difference quotient represent? If we're going to approach negative 4 from the right, this difference quotient actually represents the slope of the secant line through this point here, which is the point negative 4, f at negative 4, and a point on the right, which can be represented by x, f of x. So the slope of the line that passes through these two points is actually equal to this one, change in y over change in x. And as x approaches negative 4 from the right, the slope of the line that passes through these two points here is actually constant. So this is just a constant, okay, as x approaches negative 4 from the right. And what is the value of this? It's actually equal to the slope of this line segment here. And clearly, using rise over run, the slope of this one is rise by one unit, run to the right by one unit. The slope of this line segment here is equal to 1. So the value of this one, when x is close to negative 4 from the right, is just 1. So the limit of this one is just equal to 1. Let's now move to the last limit. So let's find the limit of this difference quotient here as x approaches 1. Now, what does this limit represent here? This limit represents the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. So if you know already what do we mean by a tangent line at a given point, then you can easily answer this limit question. And the answer here is that the limit doesn't exist. Why? Because at x equals 1, we have a discontinuity. And if we have a discontinuity at a number, then we are sure that there is no tangent line at that point. And because the tangent line doesn't exist, then its slope doesn't exist as well. Now, how do we find this limit here? if we haven't learned the concept of a tangent line yet. So here, we're just going to consider this as the slope okay, of the line that passes through the point x, comma f of x, and the point 1, comma f at 1. So this is our 1, comma f at 1. And our x is close to 1, but not equal to 1. So you can uh, have any x value on the left of 1 or on the right of 1. So if we're going to consider x values that are on the left of 1, then this will be your x, comma f of x. And the difference quotient represents the slope of this line here. So the slope of this one is equal to f of x minus f of 1 all over x minus 1. Now, what happens to this line as x approaches 1 from the left? So when we approach 1 from the left, the slopes will approach positive infinity. Why? Because this line here with a positive slope, are approaching this vertical line here. While when we approach 1 from the right, the slopes are approaching negative infinity. Because as you can see, if we have a point here, x, comma f of x, then the slope of the line that passes through these two points here has a negative slope. But again, as you get closer and closer to 1, the line will approach this vertical line here that passes through these two points. Therefore, this quotient here, which represents the slope, this will approach positive infinity if x is approaching 1 from the left. And it will approach negative infinity if x approaches 1 from the right. Therefore, what is the two-sided limit? The two-sided limit doesn't exist. 
And we cannot say here that uh, it's only positive infinity or it's only negative infinity because it can go positive infinity or negative infinity. It depends on the direction where we approach one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.